Hi guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at the document called Additional Topic Similar Triangles Fill in Proofs. It's located under Modules, Unit 7, and there's also a separate document that has the word bank to make things a little bit easier on you guys. Now, before we start, let's go back over one key big concept, and that's the difference between congruence versus similarity. In Unit 5, we learned that when two figures are congruent, that means that they're exactly the same. But going a little bit more in depth, that also means that the corresponding angles were the same and the corresponding sides were the same. By contrast, when we're talking about similarity, we're talking about figures that look kind of sort of similar, but they're not exactly the same size. So when we're talking about similar figures, we know that corresponding angles are congruent, but corresponding sides are proportional. So as we approach these proofs, I want you to keep those two big ideas in mind. Congruence, both angles and sides are the same. Similarity, angles are the same, but the sides are proportional, right? They're either blown up or shrunken by the same scale factor. Now, we're going to start off by taking a look at example number one. Once again, example number one. Now, as always with proofs like these, it's very helpful to know what I'm given. So in this case, they tell me that segment MN is parallel to segment JL. So let me actually write that in. Okay, um, hmm. how exactly can I show that in my diagram? Well, what I could do is I could actually draw parallel lines. It's not obligatory. But for me, it actually helps me see later in the problem how these nasty transversals and parallel lines from unit 4 are coming back to haunt us. How did we know this? Well, they gave it to us. So that means that my first reason would just be plain old given. Okay, so now we run into a problem. We have two blank lines right next to each other. Oh god, what do I do? Well, here's the thing. Why the heck did they tell me, guys, that I have two parallel lines? Hmm. So in unit four, what did we learn? We learned that when we have two parallel lines that are cut through by a transversal, that means that I have certain angle types that are either congruent or I have certain angle types that happen to be uh, supplementary. So let's actually take a look at this particular problem and let's see what we can figure out, all right? So uh, in this particular case, notice that this angle right here and this angle right here, do you guys notice how they are both on the right-hand side of this transversal? They're both on the right and they're both above. Like this is above JL and this is above MN. I wonder what type of angles are those that are in the same relative position? Oh my goodness, corresponding angles. So over here, I could say that angle KMN, why is it KMN? Because I can name it using three letters, K, M, N, and M is the vertex, is congruent to K, J, L right over here. And the reason is, well, what type of angles are they? Corresponding angles are congruent. All right. Now for this next one, they actually gave us something interesting. They gave us the reflexive property. Now we said in unit five that the reflexive property was generally used when we were talking about um, shared sides. Now, in this particular case, we're going to actually extend it to a case where there's a shared angle. So take a look at this itty bitty triangle up here and then consider the whole triangle, triangle JKL. Do you guys notice, do they happen to share something in common? 
Oh my goodness, yes, they actually do. This angle right up at the tippy top, angle MKN, or you could call it angle K, is shared by both. So guess what that means? That means that I can say that angle MKN is congruent to itself, angle MKN, and because it's shared between both triangles, it's the reflexive property we use to justify it. Now, they were super, super nice here, and they actually told us, oh my gosh, triangle JKL, JKL is congruent to triangle MKN. Now, the nice part, if I follow my strategy and I actually draw everything that I know as I go through the proof, I can actually read it right off this diagram. There are only three choices, guys, for similarity. It could be SSS, it could be SAS, or it could be AA. What do you actually see in this problem? Well, I don't know about you, but I see an angle and I see an angle. So what that tells me is that these two triangles are similar by angle angle similarity. So what are the major takeaways from this particular proof? Well, takeaway number one, reflexive property is very useful. Reflexive property can be used either for shared sides as with triangle congruence, or in the case of triangle similarity, a lot of it's gonna be uh, shared angles between two triangles. Big takeaway number two, when you guys are given that two lines are parallel, that should automatically start setting off alarm bells in your mind. Either it means we're gonna have corresponding angles or the other one that shows up every so often is alternate interior. So we might see that in a future proof, okay? Now, let's take a look at another example. Specifically, let's take a look at example number three. All right, so number three looks a little bit nasty. So I'm gonna draw it here as a big triangle, and then there's an itty bitty triangle, right? So that's W, X, Y, and Z, V. All right, let's see what we can do here, guys. Statements, reasons. All right. And this one, once again, has four lines. One, two, three, four. All right, so first things first. Uh, they tell me that W, Y bisects blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm just running out of space here, so you'll have to forgive me, okay? Now, what exactly does that mean? If W, Y bisects this big angle over here. Well, I know it's given to me, so I'm gonna fill that in first, right? They actually told me that in the problem. But now for line two, we need to figure out why the heck did they tell me that? What exactly does it mean to bisect? In unit one, we learned that to bisect something is to split it in two equal parts. So what that tells me, guys, is that these two angles right here happen to be exactly the same. Now, if we take a look at our word bank, here's what we're gonna see. We're actually gonna see that angle X, Y, W is congruent to angle Z, Y, V. So let me actually write that in. Angle X, Y, W is congruent to angle uh, Z, Y, V. Hope I did that right. And how did I know that? How did I know those two angles were exactly the same? Well, I knew that because it was an angle bisector, it made them equal parts, right? It split it to equal parts. So I can say definition of an angle bisector for this next part. Then they give me another part that happened to have already appeared in the original problem, right? Like it was given to me. So they give me this weird thing, like X, Y over Z, Y. What the heck is that? Why is that there? Equals W, Y over a uh, V, Y. So guys, uh, newsflash. If it's given to you and the original problem was part of the given, the reason is going to be given. Now, the hard part, and this is where I need you to take a little bit of a leap with me. We're going to do something that maybe some of the other geometry teachers might not like, and we're actually going to use some tick marks here. When I say we're going to use tick marks, we're not using tick marks to show congruence. Instead, we're going to use tick marks to show similarity. 
similarity. And by similarity, what I'm actually saying is proportionality. So you see how they have xy over zy? Another way of saying that is that the ratio of xy to zy is the same as the ratio of wy to vy. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw like a single squiggle here. And I'm going to draw a single squiggle here. I'm drawing a squiggle just because it, I don't want to confuse you and suggest that they're the same like we did with congruence. But I want you to see that they're actually giving us a side pair. Same thing here for wy. I'm going to do like two squiggles and I'm going to do the same two squiggles for VY right over here. Now, the reason that's important, guys, is that now look at what I actually can see from my diagram. Side followed by an angle followed by a side. So that means that these two triangles are similar by side, angle, side, similarity. And thus, I can actually just say triangle WXY is similar to triangle VZY, all right? And notice similar just has the single squiggle, not the congruence. Okay, so what are the big takeaways from this problem? Takeaway number one, uh, guess what? Angle bisectors come back, right? A lot of stuff from previous units comes back to get used in proofs. Big takeaway number two, is that when you see something like this, when you see like these weird fractions with sides that are showing up, what they're actually trying to tell you is that you have side pairs that are proportional. And so if you want to translate that into a language that's much easier to understand, just put tick marks by the corresponding sides in your diagram. That will eventually help you see much more easily which one of the three similarity postulates you can use. All right, last but not least, guys, Let's take a look at example number six. I know this has been really long and I apologize for that, but I want to make sure that we're thorough about what we're doing. All right. So example number six, all right, they give me two triangles kind of like this. Ugh. Again, I, I apologize if these are really ugly and drawn really badly. You guys know from previous experience that this is most certainly not my strong suit. R, Q, P. All right. Now, for my statements and reasons, right, they actually give me, well, they give me a given, right? So I'm not going to actually waste your time by rewriting everything that's given to me here, but I'm just going to draw these, you know, lines, and I'm going to say that it's given. Now, let me ask you this. They gave us those three fractions, right? They gave us those three statements of this over this equals this over this equals this over this. Here's what they're actually saying, guys. They're actually saying that LM and PQ are proportional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a single squiggle on each of those. They tell me that MN is proportional to QR. So I'm going to put a double squiggle on each of those. And then they tell me LN is proportional to uh, PR. So I'm going to put three squiggles, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. Now tell me, what do you guys actually see in that diagram? Ha! Huh. What you see is that I now have SSS similarity. So SSS is going to go right over here. And what do I use it to do? Well, I use it to actually show which two triangles are the same. So in this case, triangle LMN is similar to triangle PQR. Now, when I say the same here, I'm not saying exactly the same. I'm saying they're similar, right? But one is bigger than the other. So I'm going to say triangle LMN is similar to triangle uh, PQR. PQR. Now, normally, when we end a triangle similarity proof, we end it with this statement. We end it with two triangles that are similar and then like an SSS, SAS, or one of those things. Now, I want to call your attention back to Unit 5. In Unit 5, guys, we actually had an example where when we didn't end with triangles being congruent, but we had something else, we used CPCTC as our final step. In this case, because we're actually trying to show that I believe an angle pair is congruent, right? Angle N is congruent to angle R. 
uh, we don't, we're not able to use um, CPCTC because that's only for congruence, but instead we can say that because the two triangles are similar, we know that their corresponding angles are congruent. So I can say corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. So again, if we're going to draw the analogy here between unit 5 and unit 7, in unit 5, we said that CPCTC came at the very, very end. If we're trying to show something other than two triangles are congruent, we would use CPCTC. By contrast, in unit 7, if we're using similarity, then there are two possible things we could have at the very end. Either corresponding angles, right, are congruent, or we could say that corresponding sides are proportional. Which one you use will depend on the specifics of the problem that you're looking at.